Hey guys, Archer here, a first year medical student. Today we're gonna to be going through how I use Active Recall when I'm learning and understanding new content. I'll be going through again how Active Recall is the best way to prepare for your assessments like tests and exams since there's such a large breadth of scientific evidence backing it. Today we're gonna to be going through why Active Recall, the importance of understanding verse memorization and the fine balance between the two, and then we're gonna look at how to use Active Recall when we're learning and understanding content for the first time. Active Recall is the process by which you test yourself with how well you know the content outside of your test in your exam, so you're doing it before. When you're doing this process, which is similar to your test in your exam, you're actually strengthening the memory that you make when you're learning the content, which makes it easier for you to retrieve at a later time, like in your test. I have a video which explains all of this in a lot more detail, so if you haven't checked that out already, make sure you check it out. The interesting thing is you don't actually learn how to learn before entering university in most cases, even though they require you in this adult learning environment to be an independent learner. So with Active Recall, we can actually become an independent learner and become better than we were using the older techniques which are not as effective. Active Recall is really important because it strengthens the neural connections between pieces of information in your brain. Memories are more easily retrievable when you're able to have strong connections between those pathways between the neurons. Active Recall helps with reinforcing these connections and that's why it's known as one of the best ways to study. You know, in maths, you actually are going to probably do some practice problems before you enter your test or exam. So I don't see why there's not a reason to do it for things like biology and medicine as well, when that's obviously similar to the way that you are tested in those exams. So really you should test yourself in the same way that you are actually going to be tested in your exam. Often we hear that active recall is more effective when you're trying to revise for content and prepare for an exam but you can also use it when you're trying to learn something or understand something as well. Passive learning is actually something I used to do and that's where you just pretty much listen to your teacher talk and take some notes down at the same time or when you're just reading a book in a chronological order and you don't stop until you finish your study session. However, the thing with this is with active recall and active learning, it's not the best way to be studying and not the most effective thing you could be doing in that time. And we'll go through those things later in this video. Also, another thing is that your mind is actually really good at fooling you that you're a pro at what you're trying to learn. Have you ever been in a situation where you have to read something and then your teacher or someone asks you to talk about what you've just learnt and then you're not really able to think about what you've just read. This is actually exactly what I'm talking about and this happens all the time. What's actually happening here is you're getting more familiar with the way that the information has been presented to you and you're learning about the author's understanding of the topics and you're not actually able to see quite effectively how you understand the topics. So essentially you feel good about it because you feel like it's all making sense, but really that's just seeing the way that the author has outlined it for you. Once you take a look away from it, all of the information that you just read can become quickly hazy. So this is where Active Recall comes in. Also with things like Active Recall, at the start it can feel quite miserable because you're getting everything wrong, but that's what happens when you learn something new. You don't know the content well just yet and you're not ready for the exam, so you're gonna get a lot of things wrong. So a thing that people often get stuck into is that they start to think that active recall is not the technique for them because they're not seeing the results that they want instantly. This is where you have to trust in the system and if you pair this with space repetition then you're going to find that over those repeated repetitions you're going to get better at the content and you're going to start to see the improvements quickly and then it will pay dividends in your tests and exams. So like I mentioned if you pair active recall with space repetition then you've got the power combo. So space repetition is all about interrupting the forgetting curve. The forgetting curve is essentially explaining how when you first learn something you're going to know it to a high degree and you're going to have a lot of retention but that retention is gonna decay exponentially over time until you forget it. So what happens when you space out your repetitions in increasing intervals, you'll be interrupting that forgetting curve and resetting your retention back to 100%. So I've got all of this explained in my previous video, so please check it out if you haven't already. Okay, hopefully I've sold you on this whole thing about active recall and space repetition. Let's now talk about the balance between understanding and memorization. Okay, so as you probably know, there are two main stages to learning. The first one being understanding and the second one being memorization. A lot of people talk about how if you focus purely on understanding, then you won't need to worry about memorization. However, this is not true. There are some facts which are hard facts and you just have to remember them. Things like dates, 
for example. You can often pair these hard facts with things like memory palaces or mnemonics or other any nifty study techniques to make it easier to remember, but sometimes there just isn't that understanding component. The truth is there is that fine balance between understanding and memorization when there is that understanding component available. So the important thing here is to spend a lot of time on the understanding component when it's available so that you don't have to focus so much on the memorization and that's because it comes more naturally. Another thing to mention is memorization by itself can be quite bad if there is an understanding component. So to illustrate this a bit, when I'm trying to think about the pathway that blood is following through the heart, it's very hard for me to remember all the processes that happen if I don't understand the content from the start. So if I'm just testing myself every week on the steps that are occurring and just trying to remember the collection of words that are put together, it's not going to happen. So what I actually need to focus on is why the blood is going through this part of the heart and why it's coming out the other. When I spend the time on that, then it becomes a lot more easier for me to retrieve the information since I can link all the parts together. So really the message here is just spend the time on understanding in the first place so that you can set yourself up well for later when you're trying to memorize. I can't stress enough how much understanding the content at the start will save you a lot of stress later. So for example, when I was studying for maths last year, I was always very hard on trying to understand the basic principles that were underlying everything I was learning in maths. And the reason for this is because you often find that what is actually in your test is not really similar to all the practice problems that you've been doing before. So what it's actually testing you on, as you might expect, is it's testing you on your understanding of the content. And if you have a very good foundation, then you'll be able to approach those problems which you haven't seen before. All right, let's get into how to effectively learn with Active Recall. As previously mentioned, active recall tends towards memorization, but it can be definitely used effectively with learning. So basically when I am in a lecture or reading a textbook, I'm always asking myself questions to participate in active learning. One of the ways that you can remember things from the get go is using the fine man technique. It has four steps. Choose a concept that you want to learn and remember, teach it to a toddler, identify your gaps, and then review and simplify what you've been learning. If you're able to explain it to a toddler, it shows that you have a great command over the knowledge and you're able to simplify it down so that a toddler who would not know anything about the topic will be able to get some information and understanding from you. Now in that process of going through it and thinking about teaching it to a toddler, you'll be able to identify those gaps and that's one of the most important things about testing yourself. So this is the great part about testing yourself is that you're able to see the gaps in your knowledge and then you're able to fix that up later when you review and simplify what you've learned. However, there is an issue that people find with the fine man technique and that is in the part where it asks you to teach it to a toddler. Not everything is appropriate to teach to a toddler's level and that's why I have adapted this in a slight way to make it more applicable to the way that I have to study and learn. So instead of a toddler, I think about teaching it to a friend who's in my year group who doesn't yet know the concept or at least doesn't know it well. So that's the thing that really works for me. And particularly I ask myself these four questions when I'm going through a textbook, for example. I will ask myself, what did I just read? Does this make sense to me and with what I know? Can I explain this to a friend who doesn't yet know the concept or doesn't know it well at least? And how does this relate to the other pieces of information that I already know? And this is called a thought experiment. And the last thing I just mentioned there is the most important thing that I find, it's the thought experiment. So with these questions that I'm asking myself, I'm easily able to see if I've actually learnt or if it's just gone straight through my head. And if I find there's any weakness in my knowledge, then I can easily just head back to the textbook or go onto Google or something and find out the answers to the questions and where I'm lacking. Okay, so that last question that I touched on is the most important for me, and that is the thought experiment. In fact, the thought experiment was something used by Albert Einstein extensively when he was trying to solve difficult problems in his life. A thought experiment is the way that I'm able to synthesize information that I'm learning and bring clarity to the things that I'm looking at. So with the thought experiment, I'm trying to use my imagination to have this single cause and think about all the consequences that can have to other things that are related. Let's say I was just learning about the kidneys and now I wanna have a thought experiment about what happens when blood volume decreases. So when that happens, I need to start thinking about all the consequences that, that can occur. So there's gonna be more renin produced, more aldosterone produced, and that's going to release more vasopressin, which is going to make sure that more solute concentrations 
um, increase in the blood through reabsorption in the kidneys, there's going to be thirst increased, uh, and they'll have to just keep thinking about all of the other effects that this can have, and then keep heading down to a deeper and deeper level. A thing that you'll find with a thought experiment is it can keep them going for a really long time. It's kind of like that situation where you ask why, 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 and what happens for something and how that affects something else. So basically, when I'm thinking about this, I start to realize that there's all these other different effects and in the bigger picture, this is just trying to increase the blood volume again. The thought experiment is a super powerful way to test your understanding and it's also quite fun and you get to see where this new piece of information links with everything else that you've been learning. Okay, so that's basically how you should learn new content with active recall and spaced repetition. All right, hopefully you found that useful and if you haven't checked out any of my other videos dealing with all these study techniques, make sure you check them out soon. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.